Do you wish to speak English faster? Are you a professional who feels doubtful? Maybe you feel like you lack fluency and that's affecting your confidence in the workplace. Stay tuned because in this video, we'll revise nine tips that are gonna make you sound more natural, more fluent, and more confident in English. Stay tuned. Hello, it's Francisca from English to Thrive. I am so excited that we are going to talk about an element that is so important in fluency, which is the pace, a fast pace. If you're excited about this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe because I release videos every Friday on English confidence for ambitious professionals. And don't forget to hit the notification bell as well. Now, a little clarification, just because you speak fast does not mean that you are fluent. Yes, as I said before, uh, a fast pace is an essential element of fluency, but accuracy is important as well. So if you speak fast, but you make a lot of mistakes, then that wouldn't be fluent English. Now, I'm excited for you because by the end of the video, I want you to have a plan. I want you to have real exercises that you can implement every day because remember, practice makes perfect so that you can stop doubting yourself and you can speak at a pace that makes you feel confident. So after every tip, you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned because there's gonna be an exercise that you're gonna be able to implement. Also, I have a special announcement at the end of the video. Before I reveal the first tip, I wanna speak about the English confidence method. As you can see on the screen, I'm working on something that I call fluency tracker with my student, Fabi. She's from Mexico and she came to me. She already had a good level of English, but she wanted to increase her confidence and she has done so. So I'm so proud of her. What you're seeing is that we are actually working on something that I called, as I said, the fluency tracker. So basically every Wednesday, my students submit an order and what I do is I make them record an audio, write a text in a minute, and in that minute, I evaluate like how many words they say per minute and what mistakes they do. Because as I said, a fast pace is not the only element that's important in fluency. It's also accuracy. So as I explained in this video right here, and this relates with tip number one, you have to be able to track how many words you say per minute so that you can listen to that recording and you can evaluate yourself. Only that way, you're gonna be able to increase your pace little by little. So tip number one to increase your pace is to read text while you time yourself. Now, I've talked a lot about a tool that I find super useful that's called Project Good to Work. I'll link it below. But essentially, you can find texts about things that you like and about your profession. So let's say that you're a doctor. You can go into Project Good to Work and find texts about medicine. And not only will this help you record yourself and, and track your pace, but it will also teach you new vocabulary as a professional in your field. Now, this is how the exercise works. So you uh, copy and paste a text, right? You can use Google Drive. And what you'll do is that you'll find a chronometer online, or maybe you can use your cell phone to time yourself, and you will time the words per minute. Now, in a minute, you can usually read from 100 words to 300 words. But remember, the important thing is not that you run and you read like 400 words a minute. The important thing is that you do not make mistakes because if you read fast and you make mistakes, then that's not fluency. Then the communication will have a lot of barriers, right? So as I said, you read the words per minute and then you count the mistakes. And for this, it's important that you start recording yourself. So for example, as you see in the screen with my student Fabi, um, she has been able to record herself time and time again. And in that way, she has been able to quantify the words per minute. And not only that, but also inside of the program, I say to my students, a mistake is something that, for example, if you're reading and you hesitate and you doubt yourself, or maybe you mispronounce a word, okay that counts as a mistake and so when you record yourself and you listen back and you read the text you'll be able to know how many mistakes you've made and 
time, little by little, you'll be able to make less mistakes. Now, a lot of my students and a lot of professionals always say to me, like, how do I know? I mean, I want someone to correct myself. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's why teachers are there. That's why mentors are there. But the idea is that you get to a level that you listen to English so much that when you listen to yourself back, you're able to autocorrect yourself. Now, one of the benefits of this exercise as well is that you put pressure on yourself. You know that you are timing yourself, so this will put pressure on you to speak a little bit faster. And uh, you already know what they say, like if you, if you put pressure on yourself, you're gonna get to that outcome, right? So my student five, what she has been able to do is she feels a lot more confident, right? She makes less mistakes and even the tone, right? She can hear herself that she doesn't sound robotic. She sounds like a natural speaker, as you can see uh, in the comments, and she has increased her pace as well. So as I explained in this video right here, the fluency formula is words per minute minus mistakes divided by the words per minute per hundred, and you get the percentage. Now, if I say you do this exercise and then you aim for a fluency percentage of like from 75 to 95, you can get to 100% amazing, okay? And you can do this every day for like uh, many weeks and you'll see little by little how you progress. But of course, if you don't do anything, then you're not going to have any results. So now let's do this live. I'm going to put a paragraph and then I'm going to put some time there for a minute the idea is that you read and then you notice your mistakes and then you get your fluency percentage let's go All right, so tip number two, speak on the spot. And this means, and this is another exercise that I created that my students implement inside the English Confidence Method, is that you use audios in English and you react to real life scenarios. So for example, again, with my student Fabi, we have practiced this and she's someone that wants to work in Canada, so she needs to practice with business professional real life scenarios, because that's what she's gonna do when she goes to Canada and she wants to feel confident and prepared. So what we did is we practiced with a scenario in which she has a team project and so she's discussing with a fellow co-worker and she, they're discussing about like when do we meet to do this work, like what, what, what do we do to organize this and um, actually the co-worker is kind of like saying well i need you to be more committed how can we do this like real life things that you sometimes don't know how to deal with in a language that's not your own right sometimes problems arise because of a lack of communication and that happens in your native language now imagine how it feels like in english that's why i train my students inside the english confidence method to react to these real life scenarios now what you can do is go into youtube and search for like audios, conversations in English. And then every time that you hear a phrase, put a stop and then react, but time yourself as well. So in the speaking on this board audio that I use with my students, I put a small window 
of time so that they can feel the pressure of reacting to a real life conversation because in a real life conversation i can say to you so what are your like what are your goals for this month like what are your sales goals for this month and then i wait a little a little longer and then i said oh that's great so that means that in that small window in that small time frame you are going to be able to respond or you're going to have the pressure to speak on the spot and this is not only good for uh increasing your pace and to speak more naturally but this also increases your creativity because remember conversation is all about not only pace not only tone but also about creativity you know and the richer vocabulary that you show you're gonna appear as an advanced speaker and if you've seen this video right here this is an important one if you want to develop yourself and thrive in an English speaking scenario because usually they ask for an IELTS test and in that test you have a speaking test as well and if the examiner does not see that you're confident then they're going to think that you're not ready to thrive and succeed as a professional in an English speaking scenario. All right, second exercise to practice. This is the speaking of the sport audio you're gonna listen to and then you're gonna respond in a small time frame. Good luck. Okay, so I have sent the link to the WhatsApp chat. Um, if you can review it and let me know if you can enter without a problem. Oh no, uh, I don't think the link's broken. I think it's working just fine. Um, you don't even need to put a password or anything. You just click the link and enter the meeting. Um, are you trying to enter from your mobile or desktop? Yeah, because I've heard some people that enter from their mobiles sometimes have issues, so if you could connect from a desktop, that would be better. I think it's better that you enter from your mm, desktop because many people have had problems um, when they enter from their mobile. Yeah, we're going to be about 10 in the meeting, so what we're going to do is go over uh, the schedule for next week's meetings because each one of us is going to host a different one. Is that okay? Okay, what I would advise you to do is once you enter, you don't have to put any password or code. Uh, just click the link and you'll be redirected to John's personal room. Um, and what you're going to do is mute yourself because we're going to go over some presentations. No, no worries. No, you're, you're not going to have to talk. I'll be, I'll do the talking. Um, but, uh, from next week, we are going to take turns into just delivering each presentation and discussing about the goals of the company. Oh, really? Oh, I don't think I sent a broken link. Let me send the link again. Can you try this time? Did it work? Awesome. So I will um, admit you to the room. Uh, we'll give you permission. Um, and you don't have to have your cameras on. And you don't have to have um, audio on right now. Uh, but at the end of the meeting, there's going to be a little Q&A, so if you have any doubts or questions, let me know. Yeah, so we do have the premium option because otherwise we're going to get caught at 40 minutes. So no worries, um, that's taken care of. No, we haven't considered using another software. We haven't considered using Google Meets or um, or Microsoft Teams or anything. I think Zoom is okay. Yes, yes, I haven't I haven't had any issues with it. Cool. So if you're all in, we are going to start. Now, tip three.
three is about linking words. Now, um, if you haven't seen my video about advanced secrets, of pronunciation of American English, I highly suggest that you do so. I'm gonna leave the link here. But in that video, I speak how Americans speak in a way where they link words. And so for example, if I have this expression that is to call it a day, if you hear, if you listen closely, you're gonna listen that. I'm not saying to call it a day, I'm saying to call it a day. So that's something that um, Americans do. They link words they unite sounds and so that obviously saves time and makes you speak faster or for example this phrase that's not an expression it's like a normal phrase that you say like i don't know what happened right and so what you'll see is that you don't say it as i don't know what happened you say it like i don't know what happened you unite it all right and what you'll see as well is that they stress some words in a sentence so they don't say i don't know what happened they say i don't know what happened so if you listen closely you'll see like i don't know what happened like they're stressing the what listen to this phrase i feel a lot more confident than before so i'm not saying i feel a lot more confident than before i'm not stressing the sound I am saying it quickly. I'm changing the D to an R, so there's a change of sound as well. I feel a lot more confident than before. I feel a lot more confident than before. You see? So there's not a pause, there's not a stop. Like the whole phrase is linked. I feel a lot more confident than before. So now it's your turn. I'll put it in a phrase and you'll have to stress the word, change the sound, and link the words. Now tip four is use contractions. So for example, um, instead of saying you are, you say your, or he is, they say his, right? And so uh, this is something that you can use both in formal and informal language. So it doesn't mean that if you say you're pretty instead of you are pretty, it means that you're being more informal, no, right? Uh, of course, in the written form, uh, formality does ask, Right, in academic papers, it is better that you use the whole thing without being contracted. So you are, he is, they are. But in a spoken way, you usually, to save time, you say stuff like, you're wasting my time, instead of, you are wasting my time. Or, she doesn't know what to do, instead of, she does not know what to do. That's another thing, like, doesn't know, does not know. Contracted, doesn't know. Or, he'll see what he eats he will see what he eats, right? He'll see what he eats. Well, you do have to memorize the contractions, right? Because maybe for like he, she, you know, it's easy, right? His, she's, but for uh, conditionals, like would, for example, I would go to that party. I'd go to that party. It would be apostrophe D, so remember that. I would go to that party, I'd go to that party, right? Now it's your turn with this phrase with contractions. Contractions are often used in songs in English, and I have a whole video where I explain how you can capitalize and use it in English to sound like a native English speaker. You can watch it here. If you often listen to rap songs, they use a lot of slang, they use a lot of contractions because the idea of the music, as, me, as a musician myself, is to adapt words to a certain rhythm. So in order to adapt them, sometimes they eat uh, some syllables, and they eat some words. So that is related to the next tip. Now, tip five to speak English faster is related to music. Ah, music in English, I just love it. And it's so good to learn English in a natural way, so fun. Because as I said, you know, even in French, they, uh, when you listen to a song and you listen to everyday language and you listen to language in a formal way, it's completely different because in French, they have a lot of slang. And in English, it's the same thing. It's fast language. And so, this tip, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick a song 
and you're gonna sing it so you can find this on YouTube you can put a rap song or any song that you like but preferably rap because it's more challenging you put like the song and then instrumental and then you sing to it what this is gonna do is it will put pressure on you similar to the speaking on the spot and the fluency tracker exercise it will put pressure on you to respect the rhythm and the time so you'll see that maybe as you're reading the lyrics you're gonna uh, you're gonna feel like, oh my god, this is too fast. But that is exactly what you need to have fun, learn English in a fun way, and that's gonna help you speak English faster as well. Now it's your turn to implement, read this challenge, and do the work. Now you'll notice in the lyrics that there's a lot of slang. Slang is like language that's informal, that's used in the streets. And this is related to the next tip. Now tip six is reduce some words. Now we already talked about contractions, um, but in this case it's a little bit different because for example, you have words like going to, and uh, you're gonna hear in a lot of my videos, right, that to save time or to speak faster, I use gonna. Instead of I'm going to, I'm gonna. Or for example, want to, I wanna speak faster, right? So you don't say I want to speak faster. You say I wanna speak faster. Or even want to like learning. So it's like want to. Want you, want you like learning? Now keep in mind this is a little bit more informal. So in a professional interview, you're not gonna say, "Won't you like what I do?" Right? Won't you like what I do? Not "Won't you like what I do?" That's a little bit more informal. So just be careful. Or I have to do this work. I have to do this work. So it's not I have to do this work. I have to do this work. Now read this phrase with reduced words. All right, so tip number seven is to cut off sounds. And listen to that. I don't say to cut off, I would say to cut off. So this tip, I'm gonna explain how you cut off the T and the D. So for example, again, in this video right here, I talked about this phrase that it is to get down to business, right? Which means to start something right away. So I don't say to get down to business. I say get down to business. I barely pronounce the T. Or for example, get out of my house. I don't say get out of my house. I say get out of my house. So I omit the T sound. Now in British, I would exaggerate the sound, right? Like when I say party, in American is party, party. It is a very specific sound, party. Or for example, in this phrase, what do you do? I don't say, what do you do? What do you do, right? I link the word. I also change the sound from like a D to an R. What do you do? But I also emit the D sound. What do you do? I know it can be uh, confusing the more tips that you learn, but I suggest that you watch this video all over again, that you implement the exercises and they will become clearer. Or in this phrase, to add another example, I don't say to add another example. I say, add another example, add another example. So I'm basically omitting the D. Now it's your turn. Pronounce this phrase, make it fast. All right, before I reveal the next and last two tips to speak English, Faster, I do want to invite you to download the shadowing audio. This is related with the next tip, but it is an audio where um, you can practice with audios in English and think less in your native language and think more in English and speak faster as well. And I explained the whole technique and how to use it in this video right here. So download it below and also comment below, have you ever implemented one of these techniques? Uh, do you find them easy? Do you find them difficult? I would love to know and that way I can answer and help you even further. Now tip eight, do some shadowing. As I said, I have a whole video 
of the technique and this is a technique that i learned as an interpreter like a consecutive and simultaneous interpreter this technique is golden as you see the comment from my student where he because of this technique of practicing every day he went from like having a 10 percent of spoken skills to 70 percent spoken skills he feels a lot more confident and so yeah i'm gonna uh give a little live example so you see it and then it's gonna be your turn to implement but essentially what you do is you take an audio in english and you listen to it if you want you can just listen to it the first time then the second time you repeat it now the idea it is an audio that it's not slow that doesn't have subtitles so that it is challenging for you and you can start imitating sounds phonetically and you can also train your brain to think more in english because what you're going to do is listening to a lot of audios that can come from youtube um, Spotify, you know, your favorite podcast, there's no excuse. The only thing you have to do again is listen to the audio and repeat it. So repeat while the native English speaker is speaking. So not after, but during. And it can be confusing, but again, this will fill out your brain with a lot of words in English. You don't have, you won't have anything else then to think in the language. And that is the base to start speaking English more fluently. Now, again, what I've spoken about is pressure. So there always has to be a certain element of pressure when you're mastering skills. So as I said, with the fluency tracker audios, um, you have uh, with the speaking on the spot audios, you have a time frame that you have to respect when you um, sing in karaoke. So the same with this, because it's going to be an, a natural audio of an English speaker, you're going to feel the pressure to keep up with the words and to keep up with the rhythm. And that's very important. Now, I'll leave an example for you and then it's your turn to implement willing to and open-minded. Open -minded. Also, before we get into this video, hit that subscribe, subscribe button for more tech, coding, tech, career -related coding, related content, and, content. Leave and leave in the comments other videos, videos. you want me to cover, any questions you, 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 have, to cover any questions you have, I do my absolute best to answer every single one of your questions. All right, let's get into it. Now, this is just my prediction just based my prediction on someone who's been in the tech the industry for quite a while now and, a while. and has been a uh, software been developer a professional or a fake population. She turned away. Come back, the caterpillar called after her. I have something important to say. Alice turned and came back again. Keep your temper, said the caterpillar. Is that all? said Alice swallowing down her anger as well as she could. No, said the caterpillar. It unfolded its arms, took the hookah out of its mouth again, and said, So you think you're changed, do you? I'm afraid I am, sir, said Alice. No, last tip, and then I have a special announcement. Okay, so last tip is imitate. Okay, I've spoken about this technique as well. And the difference between shadowing and imitation is that shadowing, uh, you repeat words while they're set. So it's during. Imitation, you listen to an audio and you repeat it after. So let me give you an example. If I say, building a business is not rocket science, no, you would repeat the whole phrase afterward. Building a business is not rocket science. Now the key to imitating is to imitate the sound, the tone, the pace. And like in everything, it's like you have a role model. So for example, when I was starting a business, I made sure that I listened to a lot of my favorite entrepreneurs so that I could imitate what they did to get to a successful outcome, building a business. Now, in your case, you would imitate audios of native English speakers because that's how you wanna speak or that's how you should wanna speak, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, so do it with, again, uh, audios that you find on YouTube, um, on Spotify. There's no excuse, there are so many tech tools that you can use so for example when you're driving and you're listening to some news or some podcast what you can do is you can do some shadowing but you can also do some imitation so you put a stop to the audio and then you repeat the phrase to whatever they're talking about and what this will do is it will create habits because remember it's like when you go to a gym, like you're not gonna have results if you just go once, right? You're gonna have results if you go over a couple weeks and then months and then years, the same with English. So there's no tactic that is efficient if you only do it once. 
So if you want more motivation, I highly suggest that you watch this video right here so that you can create more English confidence habits. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I am so excited. And before I reveal the special announcement, it's your turn now to implement some imitation. It's not only my fault, you know. It takes two to tango. Okay, so I hope that you enjoy these exercises and you most of all feel a lot more confident and you feel like you have a plan to speak English faster. Now, the special announcement is I have more spots in my calendar to have a chat and see if you're a fit for my program, The English Confidence Method. It is a program that I created as a non-native English speaker myself to achieve more of my career goals because you have everything that you need to thrive in an English speaking scenario. So if you want to master fluency and confidence and capitalize on more career opportunities in English speaking scenarios, I suggest that you book a call and that we have a chat and that we can see if we're a fit to work together so that you can have amazing English confidence results. So, link is below. All right, so last but not least, do not forget to like the button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any video on English confidence. And I highly suggest that you watch this playlist on habit building because you can learn a tactic, but if you don't turn it into a habit, you won't have amazing results. So check out this playlist and also this video about habits as well. Okay, see you on the next one. Bye-bye.